Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. Well, Double News back with an update on the uh, Toyin L200 HGP407 build. Uh, <laughs> I got some suspension in it. I kind of had to rob some things from other kits that I had because nothing's coming in the mail. So, and sitting around idle and, you know, not wanting to keep you guys in suspense. I can always put the other stuff back together again later. So, anyway, I decided to do a four-link kit with this thing. The articulation is pretty good, you know. It, uh, let's see underneath it there. Get my arm out of the way. But I did a four-link. I don't have the uh, transfer case hooked up in it yet. Um, but, you know, I wanted a kind of a, good-looking stance on the truck so I think I achieved that with that and uh, back the camera out a little bit there we go I think I'm there with that and I got a speed controller back here to power my radio for now and you know, I'll put some two two wheels on the thing and uh, some mud slingers from RC full drive but uh, yeah I, I was gonna do a super scale version of this but I already did one with my black truck there you know with the small one nines and stuff on it and uh, now this one here I'm running a three-speed transmission here that you can see I've altered this one a little bit and uh, what I'm waiting for is this transfer case here I made a whoop I've taken it apart and um, Hang on a second. I like my butter fingers I got. But anyway, there we go. I've taken it apart. And you can see there's one gear missing out of it. And I'm going to run that as the main gear. However, the gears in this thing are all one piece with the shafts on them and everything they're not um they're not the type that has the pin you know to hold them in so so long story short i'm gonna have to wait like <laughs> to either i get a pinion or i even ordered gear sets from different um transfer cases with uh the ones that had the, the pin slot in them because what i'm going to do is Okay, on the back of the transmission right here, I'm going to move this shaft backwards more and This will mount Just like so On the back and I'm going to have it instead of the slip collar that you know the five millimeter connector collar I'm going to have this on there. So as soon as this gear comes I've already got that gearbox prepped and ready. Let me uh, crack the body off this real quick and I'll show you what I did to it. Voila, the beauty of editing. Now the body's off. So, you see there's no front drag shaft in it yet, but I do have the rear one kind of hooked up, not at the angle I like, because it's gonna be dropped down quite a bit. It's actually the drive shaft angles are gonna be way down here underneath the cross member. And uh, so far, everything looks good. However, the, uh, I wanted to show you guys what I did and how I set up the shift mechanisms. I'll zoom in on it here. As you can see, I just laid a piece of, it's like 16th inch, half inch by one inch angle. And I just cut a section out of it and bolted it right to the, uh, the gearbox. And uh, then I just put a, another piece of angle this way and this way and put my servos on there so I have my first and second gear servo here and my third and reverse servo here and then this here I hooked up as a throttle you know just to try it around a little bit and I was trying to hook the brake up here but I'm gonna have to reverse some things on the carburetor so I can so I can reverse the swing a little bit so, so far so good and then I just hooked up a steering turnbuckle as you can see right there and let me try to 
Try to get a good one where I'm at here. Get away from that, Dennis. Get away. There you go. Yeah, just a steering turnbuckle off a um, semi truck. And it works pretty good, actually. Um, and the thing, you know, I'm going to update the shocks on the thing because it's uh, um, yeah, kind of springs are a little, little weak for this. But you can see what I did with the steering. It goes basically from the box right to the servo directly with no no servo saver you know and uh there is a little slop in the front end here just a little bit it kind of moves just a little bit so i'm gonna have to tighten that up somehow and uh but so far so good i'll try to focus on the I'll show you how the shifting thing works plug this in for my power Till I get a I like using speed controls to run um, the starter motors because it's, it's pretty convenient with a speed control because you have um, back out because you got your power coming right into your receiver that way you don't have to carry another battery so basically splice the speed control into um, your glow plugs and and when you turn it on everything works all at once so but anywho i'll try to get this now i've got this i kind of had to mark these up on my i'm using these as my shift channels up here so if you watch uh third and third and uh reverse right here i'll zoom in And you'll see how I did it. So you see, you just move it a little bit and it locks in and it locks in. That's simple. And when it's running, then, then that right there would be neutral. So there would be reverse and there's third. So these things don't always mesh in perfectly all the time. Um, for the simple fact that you, you know, they got it when they're running, it'll be better. So, back that out. And, like I say, the, these wheels are really sticky, so. Let me see. Simple direct steering link there, and I grabbed a couple of brackets off an old Traxxas T-Max chassis I had laying around. And, uh, so far, so good. Now, if I had... Um, if I had this gear, I would have done a running video today. Now, as you can see, I'm still running the one carburetor on this thing because it works great. Um, I haven't been able to, uh, well, with the holidays going on and everything, get a hold of them for, you know, belts or something like that. I, um, I left them a, a, a message there through an email and they're going to get back with me with some belts, um, some belt information for the timing and starter, and I need, I could say, the other piece of the carburetor, which I did not see listed on their um, on their parts page. So, but like I say, the the axles I'm using are the TG or Integi, however they pronounce that. I'm always in trouble for that. Um, you know, so all the brackets all bolt together, and then I bolted it to a piece of another piece of. Uh, of the L bracket um, aluminum it's you know it's basically this stuff here except it's instead of eighth of an inch it's sixteenth inch and I just ran it directly to the engine bolted it on the side came down the sides here and then made a couple of ears just cut a piece off made a couple of ears to mount my gearbox on there that way I can adjust the gearbox up or down for any kind of different uh, pinion changes I want to do on it so I went with a large pinion on the thing because I was going to run a taller tire. So I don't know how it's going to go. We're going to find out. I've never used one of these gearboxes before. Um, I'm excited to kind of throw it in together and see what it'll do. And uh, and like I say, I don't even know what the what the uh, the gear ratio of these of these uh, axles are either because. 
they're the curry style um, rock crawler with the um, skid plates on the bottom and everything and uh, I felt it would you know when I was going to put that together I was going to use a different format I was going to leaf spring the truck and I thought well I've already got one leaf spring so but I wanted to try one with a four link so like I say I uh, dismantled my other one because I got a frame coming I got all the stuff coming but guess what it's, it's not getting here so in the holidays everything's slowing down because of the you know the, the just everybody's sick and all that stuff so like yes you got to be patient and uh when it gets here it gets here so but the way i set it up was i wanted everything to set underneath flatly so i still have probably a half inch of room on top here where the you know the stock body sits on the thing you know um that's what i actually cut the post down on the back here just a little bit to bring it down so it looked pretty scale you know what i mean and i got to reconfigure my front mount a little bit and like i say once that gear shows up i'm in business i can bolt everything back together and take it out for a trial run and hopefully get you guys some video over you know running around and it seems like it's geared pretty low in first and reverse so um or you know so i don't know what second and thirds like as far as the ratio goes in the thing because we're you know these are normally um you know on the input shaft on your rear cars they don't have this big gear on there they just go directly into the gearbox you know and uh you know with just a clutch that slams it together you know so you know it's like I said, I wanted to try to attempt to make a crawler out of one of these things. So if it's geared down plenty like that, then I can play with my tire sizes. I can go with a smaller tire to give it even more crawling ability. Um, I did, I mentioned in my other video, I do have a couple of more of the older style transfer cases with the two-speed, the high and the low. And I really wanted to put that on this. So if those show up... Um, you know down the road that will be a factor well we'll see we'll see what the gear ratio is when i start driving it so um you know any questions comments hit me up um, i was going to say you notice the frame is black because i had taken the bruiser frame and put it back in the box and and i'd use that hdp 407 frame that i had and um i transferred everything over to it and like i say went from there if you remember this build here this build was started off with the the extra speed uh, false motor and, and transmission, two-speed transmission in it. And I just popped that out and went to town on it. So, like I say, you know, any questions, feel free to throw them at me. And uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, any, you know, any questions or comments, you know, like I say, don't be afraid, you know. Um, I'll uh, get back to my build and I got to clean up some mess and do some laundry because I got to go to work tomorrow, so... Hope you guys had a great Christmas and a good New Year coming. So I'll be talking to you before the New Year anyway. So you guys have a good one, man. Adios.